Hello. Can't see tell if this is working. There we go. <clears throat> hey guys. So I did it. I finished my first year at BSSM Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry. Um and I just wanted to take this time to make a video about the things that I've learned while I'm being here while being here the past nine months um, and all the different ways that I've I've changed um, from my time here. I I wasn't actually really even sure what brought me out here or uh, why I came. So many people asked me like, Grace, why um, why do you want to go to BSSM? Like, you know, what do you think you're gonna you're gonna get from going there? And honestly when people asked me that I didn't know what to tell them because I had no idea. Like all I knew was that like I felt very strongly that God was calling me to go. I knew next to nothing about the school. Like I hadn't even heard of it really before. Um, you know, I just happened to come across it through a friend. They recommended I check it out. I went there, I felt very strongly God was calling me. So I was like, okay, you know what? Fine, I'll pick up, move across the country and <laughs> and go to this crazy school. Um, but it's been a wild nine months. Um, and today was graduation. Um, this is my beautiful diploma, uh, Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry, signed by Bill Johnson and Chris Vallotton. And even though this isn't a real diploma, like it doesn't actually count for anything, <laughs> this piece of paper means like 12 times more to me than like my master's degree, right? Like these, these, these two guys, Bill Johnson and Chris Vallotton, like they've sewed more into my life than any amount of like formal education I've ever received. Um, so yeah, I just want to take just, a, you know, a few minutes just to talk about what I've learned here and how I've changed. Um, there are so many things. I'm actually in the process of making a list right now and I'm already filled up a whole page of like things that I've learned here and things I've learned about myself and about God since coming to BSSM. Um, but like the overarching theme, um, would be that the biggest thing I've, my biggest takeaway from this year has really, I would have to say has just been a a fresher and deeper understanding of God's goodness. And it's funny because like, I didn't actually think that this was something that I struggled with. Um, like I've never had a problem believing that God was good. Um, I know lots of people actually do have a hard time with this because they see like all the stuff that goes on in the world or they've had personal trauma uh, or hard times in their life and they question whether God is good. And I've, I've had my share of, of traumatic things happen to me. Um, you know, and, but I've, I've never struggled with believing or knowing that God is good. You know, they always say like, God is good all the time, all the time. God is good, you know? Um, and so like in my head, like I always knew God was good, but I guess like, I didn't know it in my heart. Like there's a difference between knowing something intellectually and knowing something experientially. Um, and like, I, like God just revealed to me how good he is, like in, to me personally, like intentional, his intentional goodness to my life. Like it's a whole, like I had no idea like God was this good, right? Like I knew he was like vaguely good in the sky somewhere. Like, you know, if he has benevolent thoughts towards us or whatever, but like, I didn't know like his intentional and consistent pursuit of me in his goodness to like, just like radically come after me, like in his goodness. Um, and there's just so many things, like, I don't have time to get into all of them, but of the ways that he showed me his goodness. But a couple things that come to mind is, um, I know a lot of people do New Year's resolutions. I stopped doing those a long time ago because I can never commit to, like, a list of, like, 20 things that I need to change and fix in my life. <laughs> so, so God told me, like, hey, so instead of making a list of things that are wrong and trying to focus on all of those, which is way too many, um, we're going to focus on one thing. And you're going to focus on that for the year. So, um, so I started doing one word instead of doing a whole list. And so my one word for this year for 2021, well, it's not actually one word, it's technically two words, but it's hyphenated. So it's one word. Um, is the, I felt like I kept hearing this word come up over and over again. And I was like, Ugh. and I felt like God was telling me that my word for this year was going to be open hand, open hand. And I was like, God, why? <laughs> I don't want this word. Like, I don't like it. Right. And the reason why is because I was like, 
here I am having to like bring more things to the Lord to surrender and let go of like just open hand. Here you go, God, take this, take that. You know, I surrender this to you. I surrender that. Like, have I already, have I not done enough for you already? I've already picked up across the country, quit my job, like went into financial uncertainty to come here for you. Like, and now you want me to have more of an open hand. I'm like, okay. Right. And so I was just like, Oh God, why? <laughs> you know, and so I don't know where I got this idea from, but I had this idea that like, somehow my desires and my wants are inherently bad or inherently at odds with God's wants and God's desires for my life. And so to be a good Christian, you know, you have to surrender and let go of those things to God and hope that, you know, it pleases him as some sort of weird sacrificial offering, you know, and like that was kind of like what I was thinking. And as the, as the year went on and like, God was like radically, like just blessing me and like, just like showing up in all these different ways and like showing me how good he was. I realized that like when he told me to have an open hand, it wasn't so that I could like continually give stuff to him and let stuff go and kind of continually surrender. But he said to me, he's like, Grace, like how are you going to receive anything from me unless you have an open hand? And I was just like, what? <laughs> like it hit me really deeply because like this whole time I was like, you know, not wanting to do it and like re resisting it, and rejecting it. Cause I was like, God, I'm tired of surrendering stuff to you. I've already let so much go already. And he's like, Grace, like I'm asking you to have an open hands for you to receive. Like, I want to fill your hands with so many good things. Like I want to give you like all these gifts and all, all of my love and all of who I am. And like that realization, like really wrecked me. Um, and just a few examples of the way that like God has showed me his goodness has been in the area of finances, for example. Um, I was working as a nurse in Chattanooga um, before I felt the urge and the call to come here. Quit my job, not knowing if I was going to have a job when I came to California. Um, I tried to find jobs here before I moved out here to kind of like secure. I was like, okay, well, let me try to find a job there first. And if I find a job, then I'll go. Never ended up finding a job. Um, I mean, I coach, I coach gymnastics uh, for fun like twice a week, but that hardly pays any bills. Um, it's more, mostly just for exercise and fun, <laughs> but like, it's not like nurse pay, right? You know, I'm, I'm used to like a certain salary with like my nursing career. And that's what I mean. I tried to find a nurse nursing job out here and it just wasn't happening. Um, so I, you know, I had questions about my finances. The only place I could find to live, um, was a lot more than I was planning on for my budget. Um, cause I have two dogs and a cat and there's not a lot of pet friendly places around here. Um, so like I could only find one place that even let me come with all my animals. And it was $1,400 a month, which is more than my mortgage back home, just to give some perspective. And so I was like, God, how in the world am I going to do this? Like, you're asking me to go to this school, go to school full time, not have a job and pay, pay rent. That's more than my mortgage back home. And I'm like, God, how am I going to do this? And I was like stressed. Like I was stressed. And I was like, I don't know how this is going to work. When I told people this was my plan, it looked to me like I was crazy. And I was like, yes, I realized that does sound crazy. But like, let me tell you, like one of the ways that God showed up in his goodness is that I never once lacked money. Like, I don't know how, I don't know how it happened. Like I had like mathematically, it shouldn't have worked out, right? Like I saved as much as I could ahead of time to be able to come here. But like $1,400 a month should have depleted my bank account like long ago, but here it is May and I still have money in the bank, right? Like I had people just like, offer to help me with money, like give me money. I had a friend give me a loan. Like I never hurt for money. And like, just realizing like, God, I can trust you even when I'm freaking out and I don't have a plan. I don't know how this is going to work. Like, I know that I can trust you because you said that you called me out here and you're not going to call me out here and then let me like flounder and drown. Right. Like if he called me to do it, he's going to see me through it. And like realizing that, like not just knowing it in my head, like, oh yeah, we can trust God, whatever. But like actually seeing it happen in my life, I was like, wow, like that was really touching to me. Um, another one of the things is like, you know, your landlord situation is always like a hit or miss, right? You never know what you're going to get. Um, but like my situation here has been the best I could ever ask for. Like I couldn't ask for a better situation. Like there are, you know, my land, landlords about my, are my age. We like talk, we hang out. They've got three cute little kids. Like they love me. I love them. I get to play with them. And they're the best parents that I've ever seen in my entire life. Like I have never seen such great parenting. Like, like I watch them interact with their kids and I'm just like, 
this is amazing. Like I need to take notes for my future children someday. Like, and it's been so healing to see like such a healthy family dynamic and like to just give and receive love from children. It's been like really emotionally healing and it's just been so beautiful. And I'm like, God, like of all the situations that I could have, like you put me in the best possible situation. Like this, not only do like, are my landlords like cool, but they're amazing. And like, I've made lifelong friends out of them. And it's just been so good. Another example of like God's goodness. Um, and I shared this in, a, in another video, so I'm not going to go super in depth into it. But um, in my past, in my history, I've had experience of having an abortion, which completely wrecked me emotionally, like knocked me off my feet for years. I was like super depressed, like the grief and the shame, like haunted me for so many years. Um, so I signed up for this community service out here for school, um, which is called Sidewalk Advocates for Life, where we try to help minister to girls that are in crisis pregnancies. And I signed up for this because obviously, like, I can relate. And like, I had empathy and compassion for these women. And um, there was this one girl who ended up going through with having an abortion. And when she was done with the procedure, she like was visibly upset, like crying. You could tell like she just like had a really rough time of it. Um, she was like really feeling the trauma of it. And I, I remember what that feels like. And like my heart went out to her and I was like, God, like, how can I, you know, what can I do? Like, I wasn't able to talk to her at the moment because um, she, her, her mom like got her in the car and they drove off. So I wasn't able to like, encourage her or you know, share any hope with her like you know letting her know like it gets better like I've been there like I understand um and so like I was praying and like I literally I kid you not like on the way home like just like 15 minutes later I have all of a sudden this craving for Starbucks and I'm like I'm not tired and like I haven't really been thinking about Starbucks so it was kind of random out of the blue I'm like okay whatever go to Starbucks and I see the girl's car, like, I kid you know, I was like, stop. I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is my chance. I was so excited. I didn't know, like, how much time I had. So I quickly, like, wrote her a little note, you know, telling her that there was hope. Like, God wasn't mad at her. Like, Jesus still loves her. Um, you know, like, she can, t you know, like, just kind of sharing my own story of how I came out of shame and how I came out of depression over it. And, like, you know, all this stuff. To let her know she wasn't alone. Because feeling alone and isolated is a huge thing. Anyways, like, you know, then I was, then like after I get, I like ran and gave her the note, I realized I'm like, man, I forgot to give her my phone number or like email just in case she wants to reach out and talk. Hi, this is Wendy. Uh, and I was beating myself up. I was like, man, like Grace, like you, oh, you idiot. Like, how could you forget that? And so then literally the next day I was out for a bike ride and I see the girl's car again. And I'm like, and the girl's car was on my street. And I was like, stop it. Like, does this girl live on my street? And like, I kept seeing her car there multiple days in a row. And like, so like one of the days she had her car window roll down a little bit. So like, I wrote like two pages long, like, like spilling my guts, like telling her my whole story, like letting her know, like there's hope and all these different things, like giving my contact information in case, like slipping it into her window. And like, in that moment, like I was just so overwhelmed with like how good God is, like how he would, he would use me to like to reach this girl i don't even know her like i know nothing about her but like he's obviously chasing after this girl like right like there's like too many coincidences for it to like be like oh well it's just coincidence like i bumped it i i saw her car like because i had a craving for starbucks and then she lived on my street and like he used me like the one person that i like, actually would understand because i've been there to like reach out to her and like realizing like god you're so like you love this girl so much like and realizing that like like he used me to like show his love for someone he's chasing down and like pursuing after like that just really wrecked me too um and then I, again like I have a list of things I don't want to make this video way too long but like one of the other things that like really like really um impacted me a lot like realizing like God's goodness was how several people like independently like came up to me like one-on-one -on -one and told me like they looked at me like, Grace, you're a completely different person than you were nine months ago when you first started school. Like, and like, there's been, I think, five people that have told me that. And they're like, Grace, like, you're a completely different person. You've completely changed from how you were in the beginning of the year. And like, like that really like impacted me, like realizing like, you know, like God, God did work in my life. Like God did show up. Like God did change me and heal me and transform me. Like, it's not just visible to me but other people have seen it too like and you know like that was really validating and just like like emotionally wrecked me you know and there's several other things that I I don't have the time to get into and but like God just like showed up time and time and time again like revealing to me like his goodness right and um so how this plays into like the rest of this is um so this whole year like he's been teaching about how good he is right 
and how that ended up manifesting was in like this overabundance of peace and joy and i'm so sorry if you hear all this growling in the background my dogs are like circling the table playing tug of war so um children go outside go like let's go outside okay <laughs> they're not gonna go outside <laughs> um yeah so like having this this revelation of god's goodness that kind of unfolded the whole year like turned into this overabundance of peace and joy in my life so i kid you not day one at registration back in like september 16 like i'm in line to register for school and some strange some stranger i don't know like comes up to me out of nowhere and she goes you know i just see you as a carrier of joy and i was like thank you like no that's not accurate because whatever like at the time i was still struggling with depression i was on antidepressants um like taking meds and like just not feeling happy you know just kind of feeling like borderline meh all the time you know so when she said that I was like clearly you have the wrong person right and then I go in and meet my revival group pastor and meet my group for the year and they gave out these anonymous cards like just generic things like they didn't write them out to a specific person they just kind of like wrote generic cards and passed them out and when I opened mine it said that joy is going to be your fuel and your prize this year and I was like okay whatever but like and that kind of thing happened over and over and over again about experiencing joy and how I carry joy and I'm like what are all these people like I don't carry joy okay like I carry depression all right <laughs> like <laughs> you know and so and like this whole year I'm like that kind of felt like it put pressure on me I was like okay like people think I'm supposed to carry joy but like I'm feeling depressed and like if you're a good Christian and you have faith in God you're not going to feel depressed so I need to like really try hard to crank out some joy here and it turned into like this performance works thing where like I was trying to crank out joy and like manufacture it in my mind to like convince myself of all the reasons why I should be joyful right and it just wasn't working right because I was like striving and working for joy which that's not how joy works right and one of the things as I was struggling with this through the year um was God told me he's like Grace remember in the Bible where it says that like the fruits of the spirit what the, what the fruits of the spirit are. And I was like, yeah. He's like, well, what are they? I was like, well, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Right. He's like, and he took me back to joy, like love and joy, um, joy and peace specifically for me. He's like, those are the fruits of the spirit. And I was like, okay. And he's like, like fruits come as a result from a tree. Like fruits don't just appear out of nowhere. Right. Like you don't just like you're like voila here's a fruit like it grow it comes from a tree like an apple tree grows apples right and so like if you want to have the apples you have to first have the apple tree and the apple tree has to be healthy before it can produce apples like you you don't just like not take care of the tree you don't it's not like you can expect it to not give it any sunlight and not give it any good soil and to not water it and then expect it to grow good apples right like the apples come from the tree right and so God was telling me, he was like, Grace, like you're trying to produce joy in your life and produce peace. Um, because like, I was just constantly stressed out and worried. I was stressed about my finances. I was stressed about finding a job. I was stressed about like a lot of things. I was just stressed, right? Like stressed about like, you know, my situation, like leaving my houses back home. And like, what if, you know, there's a tornado and it like blows up the house and I'm all the way over here and I have to deal with it. And like, I don't know what to do. Like, what if my renters, like all of a sudden all move out at the same time. And then I have no income. It was just a whole thing. I was very stressed out and very depressed. And so like, I was trying, I was trying to like manufacture joy and peace and God's like, no grace. Those are fruits, right? You can't focus on the fruits before you focus on the roots. <laughs> I'm a poet. Oh, uh, that was good. So anyways, he was teaching me like, grace, you have to focus on the tree first. And so let me just draw this picture real quick. This is the picture that he showed me. It's obviously going to not look very pretty right now, but so this is one flower and this is another flower. We'll call this one the joy flower and this is the peace flower. Okay. And he's like, you're trying to produce these without paying attention to like the plant, right? So the plant is here and here's the soil and here are the roots, right? And so God told me, he was like, look, joy and peace will naturally be produced when you have trust in me. And the, let's, let's call these roots trust, right? And the soil, I don't, don't judge my drawing, this black squiggle, squiggle is soil. And he says the soil is, is my goodness, right? So we'll just put God's goodness. Eh. 
Can you even read that? Is this even okay? So he told me that joy and peace are naturally produced um, when your roots are firmly and deeply rooted in God's goodness, right? Because how can you have joy and peace when you don't trust God? Like, right? Like, if I if I'm not sure I can really trust Him, then I'm gonna be stressed out, thinking that I've got to take care of everything myself. Like. I've got to figure out how I'm going to make my bills. I'm going to figure out how I'm going to, you know, get food on the table. I'm going to have to figure out how to deal with my renters and my mortgage and like all these different things by myself. I'm going to have to like crank out joy because I don't really feel like I have anything to really be happy about because like it's all on me and I have all the responsibility, right? And he's like, Grace, like the reason why you don't have joy and peace is because you have lack of trust. And I would never have like been able to like self-diagnose that because I was like, oh yeah, I trust God. Like, yay, trust God. God's wonderful and the Lord is all good and things. You know, so like I would never be able to self-diagnose that. But I was like, God, are you saying I don't trust you? And he's like, it's hard to trust someone when you don't know that they're good. And like that hit me because like, um, you know, like trust isn't just like this trust and faith are the same thing. But I feel like the word faith is just a Christianese version of it. Like trust is a much better like definition for the word faith and kind of faith gives like this like negative connotation in the sense where it's like, oh, I just have this blind faith where I'm just like dumbly believing things and it's like no like god doesn't want you to just blindly like be like okay well i hope this is true like no he wants you to trust him right like and that trust is based off of like facts and knowledge and relationship like you can't have a relationship without trust right and god like he's in it for a relationship he's not in it for you just like blindly adhering to rules and like just doing what he says and paying homage by going to church and doing your christian duty it's like it's not about that like it's about relationship right so it's like you can't have a relationship without trust and how am i supposed to trust him if i don't believe he's good right because like if i secretly doubt like well like god when i'm when i'm really in need like are you going to be there for me like are you is does your goodness extend to me individually like i know you're like vaguely good up there in the heavens and like you are full of benevolent thoughts but like when it comes to me personally like are you gonna like fight for me? Are you gonna like come through when I need it? You know, and like knowing something in your head and like reading about it in the Bible is completely different than knowing it experientially. And like when I started having all these revelations of God's goodness and how he kept showing up and like how like he was chasing after me and how he was using me and how like all this stuff, like this like this understanding and this like flower was like starting to blossom and open and realizing like God is really good. And like when the soil of God's goodness is good and my, my trust is able to like the roots are able to like go deeper, like then like naturally joy and peace are going to be the result. Right. Because like when the storm comes or like when the heavy rains come or if there's not enough sun or if the sun is a little bit too hot, like when you have deep roots, you're able to withstand. Right. It's like, you know, those trees that like their, their roots go so deep. And they're able to like stand firm even in the middle of like a really big windstorm because like they've got a solid foundation, right? Like if you have no roots, like your roots are super shallow and like you like you're gonna like the flowers is gonna shrivel and die in two seconds, right? So like I'm trying to produce all this joy and peace on my own and like making it this something I'm trying to crank out like a joy and peace factory. It's like I can't do that, right? Like first of all, I can't produce that in myself. It's a fruit of the spirit. So the spirit gives me that and it just is naturally produced when I trust in his goodness. And like that has just been like life changing. Cause I'm like, my situations haven't changed, right? Like I'm still depending on him for finances. I still have two houses back home that I'm stressing about the mortgages and worrying about, you know, making sure my renters are all good. And like the AC unit doesn't blow up or like the roof doesn't start leaking while I'm gone. And like trying to make sure my Airbnb stays booked and it gets cleaned and like a fresh disaster doesn't happen. And like, you know, all these different various things to stress about and like, you know, watching the numbers in my bank account go smaller and smaller, like nothing about my situation has changed. And the things that I was depressed about while I was taking antidepressants in the first place, none of those things have changed either. But like, I feel different. Like I feel joy and I feel peace because I know that it comes from my trust in God's goodness rather than like in me taking care of myself. Right. Because when we think it's all on us, like that's stressful. Like if you don't really think that anyone has your back or everything is on you, um, then it's all on you, right? And you have no one to fall back onto. Um, and like, that's really what I feel like God really wanted me to learn um, this year was, I mean, the theology is fine. The doctrines are cool. Like learning this trick and this trick and this tool for whatever and reading these books and getting to meet these cool speakers and these, you know, 
famous people and getting to go on trips. Like that's all great, but that's not why God called me to BSSM, right? Like all that is like icing on the cake. But like the reason that like God wanted me to come here was because he wanted to show me how good he is to me personally, not just in a vague sense, but a very specific intentional sense, right? And that was able to deepen my trust. And God wants me to be full of joy and peace. Like when Jesus came, he said, I have come so that you may have life and have it more abundantly, right? Like God's not interested in like mindless robots, just like I will go to church every Sunday and read the Bible for an hour a day. Like, <laughs> like that's not what he wants. Like he wants a dynamic, like actual relationship. Like, and what relationship can function without trust? It can't. Like, like if you have no trust in a relationship, there's no relationship, right? And that's where like the game changer is with God. Like, it's not about like reading your Bible every day or praying or like going to church or doing ministry or whatever, all those, those things are good, but that doesn't substitute a relationship. Right. And so, um, well, I've been talking for a long time. Sorry. Um, (laughs) so yeah, that's, that's my biggest takeaway from this year. Um, I hope this made sense to you guys. I hope it, um, blessed you in some way. Um, I would love to answer anyone's like specific questions about BSSM. I know a lot of my friends back home uh, have a lot of questions about this place, a lot of concerns. I understand because like I had a lot of those same questions and concerns when I first heard about it. I was like, they do what? Where? They, they think what? They believe why? You know, but hey, um, so feel free to mess with me about that. Um, the real question is, will I be coming back for second year? Who knows, right? Like, Thinking about that might stress me out. So I'm just going to leave that one to God and trust that uh, whatever path he wants me to go home and start working and being a nurse and pursuing my life as a nurse practitioner, or if he wants me to come back, that it'll be okay because I can trust that he's good. So yeah, that's my challenge to you guys um, is if you ever, if you're not sure that you know that God is good to you personally, um, talk to him, tell him that, right? Like he's not afraid. He's not afraid to have that real conversation with you. Just like in a real real relationship, like if I was dating someone or whatever, you know, you want to build that foundation of trust um, based off of knowing them. Like you can't trust someone without really knowing them. And you can't really know someone without having like one-on-one time talking to them. So I would start there. Um, it's a good place to start. Anyways, I love you guys. Uh, thanks for listening. And I'm going to try to figure out how to make this video stop. Here it is. Bye. <laughs>